How many are ready for the Word of God? How many are the Word this morning? I believe that we got the Word that's going to come forth from behind this pulpit this morning. Uh, this morning we got with us a, a, a good friend, not only that, but his family. Uh, awesome man of God. He, he did with us he, he, from the very beginning when we started here. Uh, Pastor Eloy and his wife, they were a part of the, the beginning of this church. And, and he helped us a lot. And, and awesome, awesome man of God. But he's, he, been, he moved to Texas, but I'll let him tell you that. Uh, but he's back for the conference, so uh, we want to give a warm welcome. Our guest speaker this morning, Pastor Eloy. Let's give him a warm welcome. Come on, come on. Well, I know. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Among the living. <laughs> we can be anywhere else, but we're in the house of the Lord. There's a blessing when you come to the house of the Lord. Don't leave the same way you came in. Shake it off. you got to shake it off. you got to shake it off and say, you know what? I am not going. I am not going without my blessing. I was looking at the babies up here and how quiet they were. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I've never seen that many babies before and they're so quiet. That's a blessing, amen. And it's a good thing to be here. You may be seated, amen. I'm excited to be here this morning. I, uh, I saw a lot of people that I knew before. They look younger or I'm older. I don't know. But... <laughs> But it's a great thing to be here. I saw Brother Nan, I think, like Nan, I think. Yeah, yeah, Nan. Nan, I said, wow. Ducky. Yeah. <laughs> he makes you feel young. <laughs> <laughs> that's why everything here that's going on. And you know, it's like a stirring. You ever seen around, been around a bee's nest? Yeah. In Texas, they got these bees. They're African eyes and all that. You know, like, but there's a lot of power. There's a lot of energy around it. And that's what I felt when I walked in here. I said, man, there's a lot of energy here. There's good things going on. Come on. There's some good things. And I saw everything that's taking place. And it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of efforts. And most of all, it takes a lot of togetherness. Yeah. And that's a hard work. And I am so happy to be here. We're in Texas right now. And... Uh, uh, we're always in, always in California in different places, but I'm excited to be here this morning. And uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open it to the book of Proverbs. And when you're going there, I'm just going to share a few things with you. Uh, I've been excited for the conference. Come on. Come on now. Some of you feel beat up, but that's why. But there's a good thing coming in the conference. Yeah, I was seeing everything that was going on, and I... I uh, I was talking to Pastor Emmanuel and I said, man, Pastor, what an excitement. There's something new here. Something good. Yes. And something great is about to happen. Amen. I want you to close your eyes right there where your heads. You can say, see, just raise your hands. I want you to say this and say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. That I have a place to worship. That I have a place to worship. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For your son, Jesus. For your son, Jesus. And your anointing. And your anointing. And most of all, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, right now. Thank you, Father, right now. For the angels of the church. For the angels of the church. Which are my pastors. For my pastors. I pray a blessing upon them. I pray a blessing upon them. Keep them. Keep them. And Lord, keep me. Keep Let your words. Fall in my heart. Fall in my heart. Amen. Amen. Give God a big clap off. Amen. You know, we were flying down here and uh, had a lot of things come against us. And they said, well, praise God, we'll just go. I don't care. They just leave. And we got here and they lost our luggage. So I told old son, hey, you deal with it. And, you know, they called us this morning. We found your luggage. I said, well, I'm not going to go and pick it up. But we'll take it to you. So it should be in a room by the time we get there. And I said, Rosa, did you bring a Bible? <laughs> she said, it was in the luggage. I said, well, okay. In the book of Proverbs, you have your Bible, the book of Proverbs, and I got to keep you low. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3. I want to minister a little bit and hold you fast to God's words. 
keeping your heart with God. Amen? Amen. How many know that it's important that you watch what you let in your heart? Yeah. You gotta be careful what you let in your heart because one good hit in the heart it will pull you out. Yeah. You all of a sudden you will start acting weird. Mm -hmm. I know you and none of the spirit have ever acted weird. Hello. But you'll be acting weird. And all of a sudden you'll be feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. You'll be singing that song poor than me. You'll be singing poor, poor pitiful me. If you allow something to hit your heart, you will become a negative person. Come on. Not only will you become a negative person, but you will be a person that nobody wants to be around. Come on. Because you will smell. <laughs> Amen. And you will also always have the poor mentality or have the victim mentality. Yeah. Come on. I'm a victim. You have to have, I have a special circumstance about me. You don't understand. Let me tell you something here. If you are in the home today, you stay in the home. Come on. You stay in the home. Don't you allow anybody to come around and talk to you negative. And when you're out in the streets, you say, no, no, no. My heart belongs to Jesus. Come on. We're homegrown. Hallelujah. I know Pastor Mike was in the home. I was in the home. Come on. And I'm telling you, I know when the hits come. Yeah. And I've seen it and within. And then within yourself. So you gotta stay in the word of God. You gotta stay hopeful in the things of God. Come on. Look at what it says in the book of Proverbs. You gotta, you gotta rely on God. Totally rely on God. You ever got hope in your wife's attitude? <laughs> Tell you one thing, you see, man, you better listen to her. Then listen. Sometimes you go to work, you come back. I'm going to talk to you right away. I'm tired and tired. Hey, listen, brother, listen to her. <laughs> Everything will be good at a time. <laughs> but if you don't, if your heart is not in tune, you're going to be upset. Yeah. Everybody's going to fight. Even your dog's going to bite you. <laughs> so you got to be careful. The book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. Chapter 3. I love the way it says it here. Verse 5, and I'm going to read verse 6. Trust, trust in yourself with all your heart. Is that what it says? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> trust in the Lord. Watch this. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Isn't, isn't that beautiful? He says, but I am putting my trust in you, God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understandings. How many know that's what God is in trouble? Lean not into your own understandings, but in all ways, all ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your hand. Amen. Amen. How many know that God is putting a lot of emphasis here on the heart? He said, man, protect your heart. He says, trust God. Put everything you've got on God. Don't allow anything to sidetrack you. Don't allow anything to hit you. Don't allow anything to tell you that you can't make it. Let me tell you something. You can make it. If you are in the things of God and you allow your heart to be governed by God, I don't care what comes against you. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody but yourself says about you. But if you allow God to stay inside of you, things will change. Your children will come back. Your family will come back. Not will we start, but the enemy has taken. Come on. And he says, trust in the Lord in all your ways. Mm. See, there are the big things that come against you. And they're going to tell you something. By the way, let me tell you, there is a lot of crazy things going on right now in the world. Yeah. There's a lot of foolishness going on. And people are fearful. They say, don't go to Walmart, don't go this place. Listen, the hey, uh, Bible says that. Uh, yeah, don't walk to the valley of the shadow of death. Listen, you're not to fear no evil. You are the God inside your heart. Uh, you continue going. And when they speak negative, you say, no, I've got the peace of God inside of me. Come on. Uh, let me tell you that because of you, because they're Christians and you've got the word of God inside of you, there is peace outside. Come on. 
Come on. The world is still tame because of the word. And you have to allow God to move in you. And people will come and they will try to discourage you. You ever have people come to discourage you? And they'll tell you all kinds of things. I remember uh, when I used to live here. I used to walk with my wife. I'd carry her in here. And I'd be praying with her. I'd be holding her, carrying her. She was like 60 pounds. And I'd be carrying her and say, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. And I had people tell me, let her go. You're being selfish. You're being self-centered. Maybe God wants her. She's going through some suffering. And I said, Eve, oh yeah. I would listen and I said, no, oh God. You got the word. You got the word. Yeah. You said you would heal her. You said you would take care of her. You said you would do this. You said, Lord, I trust in your word. I feel in your word. I be, I have the heat of God in, the, in my hands. I'm going to give it to her. And as long as she is walking here, God's going to do a miracle in her. And I'm going to be walking with her. And I will never forget one day that I was praying with her. And began to pray with her. Hallelujah. Yay, no wonder. And she said, Brother, Brother. I said, Brother, I don't know why. Because she used to have a little morphine pump. And whenever she got a little, I would just say that. I took the safety off. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Why are you hurting? You need another side of what? She said, No, brother. You need to change the songs. I ain't dead yet. <laughs> hey, hey, all right, hallelujah. And people will tell me, you know what, you're being self-centered, leave her alone, leave her to God, send her to God. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. Oh, Jesus, I went to myself and all that. Look at her now, hallelujah. Come on, your Lord. Come on, your Lord. From 50 to 60 pounds, look at her now. <laughs> Walking. She ministers at the hospitals. They have her in different hospitals in San Antonio, Texas, where the cancer wards are, and she's there ministering. Come on. And the doctor said, let her keep coming, keep her coming. She's there Monday through Friday, never fails. I'm out somewhere, she's out there praying and ministering to the people and telling them, you know what, don't let fear come into your heart. Let know Jesus, 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 Jesus. Can I tell you something this morning? Don't allow anything to hit your heart. Come on. Don't allow anything to stop you. Some of you have been discouraged. Some of you got some discouragement inside of you right now. You've got to bind that thing and rebuke it. Hey. But you've got to have the word in 
inside of you. Yes, and let me tell you why sometimes the enemy comes against you when you have the word of God inside of you. Because the more word you have, uh, the more responsibility you have. Amen. To reach the people of God. Give God a clap off right there. Amen. You can't depend on your knowledge. You can't depend on yourself. But you've got to depend on Jesus. Come you've on. got to have the word of God inside of you. You've got to act like you've got to. You've got to. Sometimes, like they say, you've got to fake it till you make it. You've got to keep on going. You've got to say, no. Some of say, I'm going. Hallelujah. I don't want to know you're going to go. Come on, you're going. No, get out. You're going. You ain't going to make it in the house of God. And I'll tell you something else. My wife used to, oh, man, she used to put pictures of me everywhere. In the church. I felt like, oh, what it. <laughs> and she said, you're going to make it in the house of God. You're going to run away. No, 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 no. I'm not going to. Hello, hello. <laughs> she said, you know what? I'm buying that stuff. You better not. I said, you're saying. No, you're going to make it in the house of God. She put all kinds of scriptures on me. I'd be acting a fool and I'd be dancing with scriptures on my pants. <laughs> but she had the word established in her heart. Yes. She used to speak the word to me daily, nightly, every day. The word, the word, the word, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's all I heard was Jesus. Amen. She would let me do it, but she, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I said, what are you talking about? Jesus. <laughs> Be tormented, Jesus, but I give my life to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're going to go through some mean stuff. But you've got to allow God mm -hmm. to give you the word to set you free. Yes. You see, the problem now is that we don't have the word inside of us. Yeah. We, have, we listen to people that talk pretty. You ever seen them? They talk so good. You got, you're, a, you're a Christian and you're calling the disciples, the psychics. Huh? Amen. We, had a, we spoke at a church not the long ago. They said they were going into the Indian, Indian stuff. Because they wanted to hear God. I said, if you want to hear God, get into your word and get on your knees. Yeah. You gotta keep your heart. You gotta keep it. Yeah. And don't let nothing take it away. Praise God, I was walking in the churches today and I said, my God feels good in you. Because you know there's a lot of bravery here. There's a lot of words. Everything's different. I said, my Lord, I saw all the young people. Uh, keep it up with God. I said, thank you, Jesus. And the Bible says you need not to do your understandings. Some of you have some stuff in your mind right now that the word can't even penetrate because your heart is so broken. But you've got to allow the word to flush it out. Amen. You're still with me today. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, oh no. God's word is the final authority. Yeah. God's word is the final authority. <sighs> I love that story about that centurion. When he said, King to God, we don't have to go. And he says, Hey, Lord, I need something. My, 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 my son is sick. And he says, You know what? Let me go to your house. He goes, No, just say the word. Mm -hmm. Just say the word, and you'll, you'll be healed. They said the word he goes, man, I have heard, I have seen such a, 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 a behavioral on a person that has faith like, like you in a long time. Can I say something to you? Change the way you are right now. And you go back to your house and you say, no, God, change the things that have been going wrong in my house and let the word be the final authority. Come on. You know, I look at most of the time and say, man, God goes, you got a lot of energy. You got a lot of stuff going on with you. Man, I, I, I leave and I come back and you're over there, you're over here. And, and she says, yeah, yeah. And I hear her in the morning, praise God. And I say, man, look, okay, everything's going to be okay. But she's got the word inside her. Yes. And pray inside her. Hallelujah. Can I say something to you? Don't allow anybody to steal the word from you. Amen. And when the enemy comes against you and he tells you you're not going to make it, when he makes everything go crazy in your life, the 
The best thing for you to do is put the word of God and come inside the house of God and give it to the Lord. He is the final Lord. Come on. Well, let nothing, nothing separate you. Hallelujah. It's what you confess. We were at a church uh, last week, and we have a, I call it a miracle service. If anybody can make it to church at 6.30 in the morning, that's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and they're there at 6.30, ready to go. And the youngest person there, I think, is 70. <laughs> so I feel really young there. And they're singing, and they're dancing, and they're praying, and they're doing their clouds around there, and all. And they were telling me something. They were saying, you know what? We're happy. And we sing and we dance because if God calls us home right now, we know one thing. We're going home. We've got the word in us. This is the way to go. We look forward for the service every Sunday. I told the pastor, I don't. <laughs> and there were some people in the church and they were beginning to mock the word of God. And they were saying, you know, you don't, you don't have to read the word every day. You don't have to pray. There is a prayer that you can pray every day. And read a word every day. Can I say something to you? Get him out. Get him out of the way. You gotta pray. You gotta get the word of God in every day. That's not some kind of easy three-step way. No. It's called theology. You just get down on your knees and you get to raise your God. Raise your hands and say, yes, I do Now get the word of God inside of me. Get some life inside of me. I want to live. Hallelujah. Come on. That told Rose, hey, Rosa, what kept you going? She goes, remember, I just always say, fear comes at night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. The joy comes in the morning as a praise God. She said, I have the word. Even though I was drugged up, even though I had all kinds of medicines going through me, I have the word of God inside of me that had life. Even joy comes in the morning. Come on. You know, some of you saw me, I was going crazy. <laughs> and God told me, calm down. I have got the final authority, but I had so much opinions and so many things that I couldn't hear God's word. I got lost one time, that's what I mean. I don't know, what about the, the, the two ten freeway somewhere? And I remember calling my brother and saying, hey, we're going to, they got out of the ground. That's what I hear. What do you want? I said, nothing. I'm just, he goes, hold on, brother, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ask God right there where you're at. I remember praying and saying, oh, thank you, Lord. I'm here to tell you this morning to hold on to the word of God. Protect your heart. Yes. Protect your heart. Don't let anything come against you. How many here are in the home? Can, I, can you see? raise your hands? Hallelujah. Women, men. Can I tell you something? Stay in the home. Don't allow anything to take you out. You know, I was sharing with Pastor Mango today. I don't know why I was praying this morning. Uh, so I woke up and I was praying for the day and then on. And, and a few things come up. And, and, and God showed me the home. I love the home. We're homegrown, so I mean, you know that's the best. Come on. <laughs> no time, it's okay. <laughs> God just gave me a heart. And I, you know, I'm not prophesying this or nothing, but God gave me a number 72. Now it's another pastor, you know, I don't know. 72 churches? 72, I don't know. 72 you that sit out? I don't know. And my wife said, well, that's the law. She said, well, that's the can I say something to you in the hope and the rest of you here? Don't leave until God finishes with you. Come on. The after is better than the before. Amen. Yes. Come on. I believe you'll become pastors, pastors' wives. Launching churches is beautiful. But when you launch on, you already know. I mean, you went to the home, man. You went to some <laughs> difficult times. Don't think that that was going to say, oh, so glad you're here. <laughs> You're going to open a church? Well, good. <laughs> You're selling candies? Well, why don't you come in? <laughs> he tries to steal it from your heart. Yeah. 
And you got to change your attitude. So it's good. No, you know what, devil? You fooled me before, but not anymore. It's on. Not it's on. I believe that God's about to stir something up in here. Yes, yes, come on. God is about to move in a mighty and powerful way. You've been through your hell. Hallelujah. Come on. Now there's a glory. Now there's a great Now there's a blessing. Everybody wants to get blessed, but nobody wants to go through it. <laughs> Hide the word in your heart. Yes. Because you'll know that people want you. Once they see you clean and everything, oh, I'll come to our church. Oh, come to our church. Oh, we can live. We're you to. Huh? Yeah, they had friends like that. They told me, oh, we went to a church one time. We were most of me to a church. And I was there. And it seemed like I had to play. Everybody stayed away from me. And then after the service, most of us all happy because the fact that, you know, what, what they came to the bishops and everything came to me. Oh, we're so glad you came. I was looking at them too. I was kind of scared of me too. <laughs> The next time you come, he said, uh, give me your secrets. I have secrets here. Cut your hair. <laughs> I said, what? What do I need you when I'm perfect? I need you now when I'm poor off. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying to you this morning is this. Guard your heart. Protect it. Don't allow anything to take over. The presence of God. That's cost you so much to have. I want to minister to you this morning. I want you to stand to your feet right there with you. And I want you to sing this with me. Everybody just stand. Just. If this is your first time you've been here before, I want to say something to you. God wants to do something. You're not here because you just came. You're here because God wants to touch your heart. And I want you to raise your hands and just say this, say, say Jesus, and take my heart. Right now, Lord, help me be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Help me be sensitive, God, to your touch. Father, my hurts, my secret sins. Father, release them to you. All my fear, all my jealousy, all my insecurities, Father, I release them to you. Touch me right now in the name of Jesus. Give me your words in my life. This morning, I'm surrendering to you. This morning, I want you, Father, break the old habits. Help me see something new. Father, I want to be not just joyful, but blessed. I want to help in the ministry. I want the ministry inside of me. In the name of Jesus, I ask this. Amen. Now right now, how do you do? Right now you need prayer. I want you to come up here. I want, I want to pray for you. Some of you are hurting. Some of you are hurting in your marriage. You have a secret thing in your marriage that you're fighting. I want you to come up here. Some of you right now are having such a difficult time. Don't be afraid. God's going to speak to you this morning. Some of you seem like you're stuck. You got something to keep? Don't let the enemy see you. Not that you have some insecurities and some bitterness. Can I tell you something? Get rid of that bitterness. Get rid of it. I would need some mushrooms to help me here in my life. Praise you.
Sonne. 